Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today you'll be slipping into the shoes of savvy entrepreneurs in San Francisco in the height of the gold rush back in 1850. You'll be competing over the best resources, locations along the wharf, and seats in the city council while purchasing rights to abandoned ships, docking them in the harbor, and then building structures on them trying to gain the most influence. Embarcadero is for 1-4 to four players, takes 60-90 to 90 minutes to play, for ages 12 and up, and published by Renegade Game Studios. Now the game is on Kickstarter at the time this video is going live, so you can also check out the project page for different pledge levels just below me. And today we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rulebook yourself. I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. The copy of the game I'm showing you is prototype. It's not final. You're going to want to check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. Embarcadero is a strategy game for one to four players where you'll each be one of these savvy entrepreneurs back in the 1850 gold rush of San Francisco. And you'll be building up San Francisco on the hulls of abandoned vessels. You'll be playing cards and adding those ships that will hopefully give you influence over certain wharfs and adding structures to them. And all your built ships give you resources to use every turn. You'll be later constructing buildings with those resources in order to get points place buildings, and also give you more resources to use each round. And placing those buildings allow you to build up on your previously built ships and buildings. And you're trying to have the most influence on certain wars because you're going to score for those throughout the game. You'll also be moving down a council track, gaining bonuses and scoring throughout the game and at the end of the game. You'll also be scoring at the end of the rounds for different things each game, like the most housing icons on your cards or the most money. You're also adding new cards to your hand of buildings and ships to give you more options. And you're also trying to decide which cards to keep for next round. So let's see if you have what it takes to become the most savvy entrepreneur. To set up, you're going to place the board in the middle of the table. And in the bottom right, you're going to make sure you're using the side of the board for the amount of players that you're playing with. In this case, two or three players. Off to the side of the board, you're going to create a supply of currency of different denominations. Infill and Wharf Tiles, these are actually double-sided. You're going to take the 100 point tokens from the different player colors, the different types of ship tiles, the sunk tokens, and different sets of resource tokens. Each player is going to take a player board place it in front of them. They'll decide what color they want to play in the game, and they'll take the building tiles of those and place them in front of them. They'll also get $15 from the bank. You'll find the character cards, and each player will either randomly get one, or if you like, you can have each player select one. But you're going to want to make sure, if it's your first time playing, that you play with this side of the card. The back side has a lot more text. That's for an advanced variant. So you're going to want to use this side of the card, and you can have everybody pick their own or randomly deal them. Each player will place their selected character next to their player board, and all the characters not used in this game can go back in the box. Each player will also get all the plastic structures of their color and place them off to the side of their player board. Each player will also take two of their scoring markers. They'll place one of them on the zero on the bottom left of the board. This is the score track. And on the upper left hand side of the board, they'll place them all at the city council starting spot. Next, you're going to find the ship cards and the building cards. You'll shuffle each of these decks separately and then you'll deal four cards of each of these face down to each player. Then you'll place those decks off to the side of the board and you'll flip over the top four of each of them below their respective decks. Next, in the upper left hand side of the board you see this flag. This is for the landmark cards. You're going to find the stack of cards that had that logo on them, shuffle them and place them face down in that spot. Next, you're going to find these goal cards. They look like this. You'll shuffle this deck and you're going to place one face up in each of these spots where it says round one, round two, round three. These are going to give you the different goals throughout the game. And, and then after this, you're going to discard or get rid of all the cards that you're not using. They can go back in the box. Keep in mind, in the final copy, these cards will be smaller, so you'll be able to see round one, round two, and round three. My copy has slightly larger cards. It's a prototype. Choose a first player by any method you like and give them the first player token. 
Now, if you remember, each player was given four ship cards and building cards. Now, these are typically secret in your hands, but I've placed them down here so you can see them because at this point, every player between all the eight cards they have is going to select five of them to keep as their starting hand. Now, to keep them, you must pay the market cost that's in the upper right. Some of them might even be free, but you're going to spend the money that you've started with into the supply and keep five of the cards. The ones that you don't keep will go into discard piles above the respective decks. If it's your first time playing, you might not know which cards to keep yet, and that's okay. You can skip this part of the setup and just come back to it after you've watched the rest of this video and you understand why you might keep certain cards. Then each player is going to take a size three ship tile. And this is a size three because you see it has three squares in it delineated by those dotted lines. They're going to place them with the short edge being next to the shoreline and the long edge being next to a wharf like this. Then they're going to place three structures, one on each of the spots of that ship tile, just like this of their color. So it looks just like this. So in a three player game, it might look something like this at the beginning. Again, don't worry about placing these now. If it's your first time playing, watch the rest of the video and then you'll have more strategy about where to go. The object of the game is to have the most points in the end. You'll be getting points by doing things like constructing buildings. And you'll be getting points at different round and bonuses like the most housing icons or the most money. You'll also be getting points by having the most influence adjacent to wharfs at certain parts throughout the game and also how far you move down the council track. The game is played over three rounds. Each round players will take turns clockwise and each player is going to get five turns per round. On your turn, players will go through an action phase and a buy phase that are both mandatory. During the action phase, they're going to select a card and do some different things. You have three options. First, let's talk about docking a ship. To do that, you'll take the card that you want to dock and you'll place it above your player board. Now, remember, you got these at the beginning of the game. You'll also take a ship tile that matches the size of the ship. So if you see this, it's basically the same thing as this. It's a size four because there's four blocks on this ship. Then you'll take that tile and you're going to place it in some of the water spaces on the board. You have some options. Uh, you can place it next to a wharf like this, or you can put it next to another ship like this. Now it just has to be adjacent to one of the tiles of the ship, so it could be something like this. Same with the wharf. It has to be at least adjacent to one of the wharfs like that. But you could place it pretty much any one of those spots like that. But maybe I choose a different spot. So let's say we place it here adjacent to this wharf. Now, being adjacent to the wharf is advantageous because it's going to help you with influence to try to score points that we'll show you later. And because of that reason, for each uh, square that is adjacent to the wharf, you must pay $1. So here we have a size 4 ship. And so we are going to pay $4 to have 4 uh, blocks of that ship next to that wharf. And then you'll take one of your structures and place it on one of the squares of the ship. Now another thing docking those ships do is now for the rest of the game, each turn you're going to be able to use these resources, wood and stone for example. Now normally after selecting one of the three actions in the action phase, you'd go on to your buy phase. But I'm going to go over the other actions to show you what you possibly could do during this action phase. So you can construct a building. Now to do this, you'll place it on the bottom side of your board and you're going to need a certain amount of resources in order to do this. In this case, this just needs one wood, which is great because now this card usually stays up towards the top, but I'm going to show you that this card gave us when we docked that ship every turn, we get this. So let's say we had built this on a previous turn and now it's our new turn. We are constructing a building and because of that, we get to use both wood and stone here, which is enough to build this building. So we have the resources for that. So you're going to be using ships that you've docked for resources. Also, each player's character will give them one of these resources per turn as well. Now, you don't track these with any resource tokens. You just use them as they're on the card. We'll show you a little later how you can gain some resource tokens that you actually can spend when building buildings like this. Now, when you construct that building, you're going to look at the size of the building. It's two. So we're going to get a two size building tile of our color. You're then going to place it on top of contiguous structures that you own. So I can place it maybe here or like this. And when you do that, you'll place one structure on that building. So we're building up to a level here and you can never go higher than a level of four. Right now we're at a level of two. At that point, you're going to get points based on that card. So you'll go one point, you just move yourself on the score marker and you'll get a bonus. These bonuses do all sorts of different things. 
Now the back of the rule book has all sorts of icons and what they mean. You can refer to that for the different cards. But for example, this one says at the end of the game, for every paper resource you have, it's gonna be worth two points. Now, if one placing a structure, if it's adjacent to at least one structure of an opponent, then you get to move down the council track one. Now, adjacent in this, in this regard means the same level, so they're both at level two, and it's right next to each other, it's adjacent like this. If this boat was on the other side of the wharf, they wouldn't be adjacent because this wharf would be in between them. When you move down the console track, you'll simply move one spot. We'll talk about more about what this does later. Now this isn't the building we just built, but I wanna show you some of the different costs that can come when constructing a building. One of them is this icon here, and this is where you have to sink a ship. So in addition to all these resources here, you must sink a ship. Now to do that, you take one of these sunk tokens and you place it over the resources that that ship had taken. Now you don't take the, the ship off the board or anything like that. It's just not no longer gonna give you one of those resources. And once there's one sunk token on there, it cannot get another one. Another is a signature cost. Remember you spend all of these resources to build this building uh, and you would typically put one structure on there. But if you're in addition to these able to pay this cost, you're able to place a structure on all of the spots of that building. Instead of just placing one, it's gonna be completely filled with your structures. Now, we talked about during your action phase, either docking a ship or constructing a building. You're only doing one of these, but instead of those two, maybe you wanna scrap a card. To scrap a card, you'll look at it. This is the scrap area. These will do all different things depending on the iconography. Again, refer to the back of the rule book for what each of these do. You essentially will you know, activate this, and then this card will go into the respective discard pile. In this case, it's a building. But here it just says that you can place two structures for each sunk token that you have. Now, when you scrap a card, if you don't want to use the action on the card, you can always either get three coins or place two structures. Now, after you've taken your single action in your action phase, you'll go to a buy phase where you're going to buy a card and add it to your hand. So you'll simply look at the cards and either of the ship cards or the building cards, the upper right shows you the cost that you must pay to the supply in order to get that card. So if you wanted to buy, say, this card, it's $2. You would spend that money, add this to your hand, and a new card would come off the top if the pile is ever empty, you simply just shuffle the discard and make a new pile. Now in the rare instance that you can't afford any of the cards, you simply take one off the top of one of these two and the cost of the card, since you can't pay it, does not come from your money. Essentially you go back one on the score track for each cost that this is. In this case it costs one, we'd go back one, but if it costs two, you'd go back two on the score track. Then after you buy the card, you're going to store one on your player board. It can be the one you just bought, it doesn't have to be, but from that point, one of the cards in your hand, you're gonna place face up, and you'll see that there's actually five spots here. This is also gonna help you track how many turns you've taken, because each round you have five turns. So at the end of the round, you'll have all five cards here, and that will signify that it's gonna be the end of the round. Now, the important part is these cards are the ones that you're setting aside that are gonna be your hand for the beginning of the next round. So these are the ones that you're gonna to wanna to use later. So after you've gone through the action phase and the buy phase, it's the next player's clockwise turn. And then when it comes back to you, just continue doing this. And you'll do this again five times, and then it'll be the end of the round. Now, at the end of the round, you're going to score depending on what round it is. Round one, you're gonna score the wharfs and this card. And the cards do different things. Again, look at the icons in the back of the rule book. But this one says, whoever has the most housing icons, if you're first, you'll get 10 points, second, six, and third place will get two points. So you'll look at the cards uh, above and below your board. And for example, this is one of those icons. You'd add up how many you have total and you'd compare it with others. Now, if there's a tie, you would combine the points. Now, for example, if there were two players tied for first, you would combine first and second, that's 16. You divide by two, you each get eight. If there's a remainder, you just disregard the remainder. If there's more than two, let's say tied for first, you would add up all three of these and split it evenly and throw away the remainder. And also, if first place was locked up, but second and third were tied, well, same thing, you'd take six plus two is eight, and each player would get four. So let's talk about this wharf scoring. Now, for wharf scoring, you're going to see who has the most influence. And you're gonna count the number of structures that are adjacent to the wharf. Now, unlike when looking at adjacency when placing structures next to an opponent's structure, meaning it needed to be on the same level and adjacent to it, this adjacency is a little different. It's just any structure that's adjacent to the wharf regardless of the level. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, versus one, two, three, four. So this player is gonna score the best points for the influence at this wharf. Now the amount of points depends on the wharf's size. 
Now, each of the wharfs start off with a size of seven, but different effects throughout the game will allow you to add wharf tiles, and now this would now be worth eight points for the person who has the most influence because there's an additional wharf spot there from that tile. For example, scrapping this card would allow you to place a wharf tile. Now, whoever's in first scores that number of points, in this case eight. Second place scores half the points, and if it's odd, you just round down. And third place scores half the points of second place rounded down. Ties are broken the same way I already mentioned earlier. Now, you're going to do this for every one of the wharfs. If you were at the end of the second round, you'd be scoring the council track and the goal, in this case, most money. Now, to score the council track, you'll look and see how many players' markers are behind you. Both these two players have only one player's marker behind them, so both these players will get three points. You always get three points for each player's marker behind you. This one's in last, so they're not getting anything. If it was like this, this player would get three, six, and this player would get three, and this player would get nothing because there's nobody behind them. Now, we briefly talked about the council track earlier. You'll be going up this when you place adjacent structures to other opponents, and there's different scrap actions that you allow to move up. But when you move up, if you get to a spot, every place that you get to or pass, you get to activate that bonus. In this case, $2. And some of these will only score the red ones at the end of the game. Now, if you're at the end of the third round, you'll score the wharfs and the council track and the bonus card there. Now, at the end of the first and second rounds, you'll follow this round preparation step. First, you'll get $1 for each of these icons that are in your area, either above or below your board, on ships or buildings. You'll then discard all four cards from both of the card rows of the buildings and the ships, and then you'll refill that with four cards from each of those respective decks. Each player will then pick up the five cards that are on their player board. These are the ones they set aside each turn, and these five will become their hand for the next round. Then you'll pass the first player marker to the player who's in last place on the score track. If it's tied, whoever was later in turn order that round will get it. Now some additional things about the council track. We told you that there were some resource tokens earlier, and if you get this, it says pick one, you simply, that's when you would get these resource tokens. In this case, you'd get one, and you can spend this, meaning put it back to the supply to use it on a turn. Now, if you meet or pass one of these red flags, you take one of these red landmark cards and you place it face up next to the other cards to the side of the board. And now this card is available for anyone to buy and to build it, you follow the same rules as when constructing a building. Now, another type of tile we haven't talked about yet is the infill tile. Certain effects like scrapping a card will allow you to place one of these. Now, when you place one of these, it has to go into a water space and it must be adjacent to at least one ship tile or infill tile that you already own. And then once you place it there, you're going to place one structure on the tile. And if it's next to a wharf adjacent, you will still have to pay the $1 docking fee to place it there. For example, this would have cost us a dollar, but now it's given us more influence towards that wharf. Now, after you scored that third and final round, you'll go to the final scoring. Each player will then look at their buildings and score any cards that have end game scoring as shown. Then you'll score the highest spot that you've passed or are on in the console track. So this would be 15 points for this player. This still also would have been 15, but this would have been 12. Each player will then score points equal to the market cost of the five cards that they've stored during that third round. And whoever has the most points at this point is the winner. If it's tied, the most structures placed, still tied furthest on the console track, still tied most leftover money. And if it's still tied, then you share the victory. Now, once you've played once, you can flip the character cards over and play with the advanced side. You still get the resource, but you'll get an ongoing ability, a one-time ability, and an endgame scoring to help you. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Embarcadero and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them since I'll be notified, but also so will Renegade Game Studios. And if you're watching this video during the Kickstarter campaign, you can also click the link below me to see all the pledge levels available, and I'm sure they'd love your support.